Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, Tuesday. What up, everybody? It is Tuesday morning, the day after Labor Day holiday weekend. Hope everybody had an amazing three-day weekend uh, as we are looking at the markets opening up a bit lower than where we closed on Friday. Welcome, everyone, to the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Uh, if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Uh, and then if you're not new to the channel, hit the like button anyway, please. It helps the computer likes to know that human beings actually do care. Uh, your thumbs up make a difference. Okay, let's dive in. Let's get started. s and is down 24 points this morning. Uh, we had our live trade room last night, and we were talking about some potential areas in the S&P. Uh, and we had this hourly level here, which we converted from a, uh, a, a regular limit entry to a confirmation style entry, primarily because of the fact that we can, we can see that we came really close to it and couldn't get filled. Uh, and then when we look at the NASDAQ, actually price came in and hit that level. Uh, in the NASDAQ. So I, I've actually taken that level off of the chart in the NQ, but it actually hit that level in the NQ, got a nice move away. Um, but we took it away in the NQ completely, as well as the Russell, uh, because we were basing in front of the level, and we'd already hit it once. I left it on in the S&P. Uh, let me get back there. Left it on in the S and P. Uh, although the amount of basing that we're getting in front of the level make it a lot less probable. Um, but we and we are getting a fair amount of selling pressure coming in with these high upper wicks on these slightly expanded range candles. So uh, lower probability now than it was but still could work out for a confirmation. So we left the confirmation entry in play. 15-minute uh, level, we came really, really close to getting filled on the 15-minute level that we had identified last evening. Uh, if I go to a 15-minute chart, you'll be able to see it a lot, a lot cleaner. Uh, we came very close to getting filled. We're unable to do so. Uh, back up to this pivot. If you took uh, this full wick area maybe you got filled uh, in reality this one just missed by a smidge by a hair um, had another level identified in the Russell um, that we came right up to and then got a really strong move away uh, from uh, from the Russell's level um, so that one actually did wind up coming and touching in the area uh, but the S&P did not uh, the NQ we're still looking at a level above and a level down below. Both of those areas do still exist. The NQ hourly level is actually better than the Russell or the S&P's 15-minute level, uh, which is a little pivot over pivot below a pivot uh, b below this pivot high. Uh, crude oil. Uh, with crude oil, we've, we, we've got this area here that I thought could turn into a decent little breakout to the upside, provided that we get some basing in front of the zone, uh, and a little bit of a 15-minute reversal. Now, that 15-minute reversal... Remember, we've got to look for basing on the same time frame. And when I come down here and look for basing on the same time frame, um, you know, I've got really, really close areas here that are going to keep me uh, out of this trade. It's going to it's going to force me to to cancel this level and look a, a bit lower for opportunities. Um, only because I don't want to get in the way of, of a moving train as it, as it kind of comes down. Um, so that one still may work out for a little bit, uh, but re remember we look for basing on the same time frame as the entry, and we're coming close to that uh, right in here. So I would actually look to see if we get a little bit of a, of a rally back up to get us an opportunity to get short or some sort of a breakdown off of the level where we are eventually. Like I said, we could get a, still a small rally off that 15-minute mark if you want to try a small long. Uh, and gold is between levels of demand and supply. Nothing really to add or to speak to uh, in the GC. So, uh, you know, looking at, the, at those four markets, you can see, yeah, we're down a fair amount in the S&P and in the NASDAQ. Um, but we are still in between some major supply and demand levels. So don't force a trade. Uh, I know a lot of people hate to hurry up and wait, but don't force the trade. Allow the trade to come to you. That's typically going to be the better, uh, the better option for you. Uh, looking at our bonds and 
cryptocurrency markets, uh, bonds as well, still sitting uh, above any of its levels. Converted the gap fill area from a confirmation or limit entry to a confirmation entry. Uh, and then uh, we are, you know, seeing that this high is about, you know, where I would look to see if we can base in front of it. I need three touches, remember that, for any sort of a breakout. Uh, looking here at the Aussie. So in the Aussie, uh, I think in the Aussie, we've got a really nice rally up here over the last little bit. This could be a decent opportunity on a four-hour chart to get short on a candle-to-candle -candle, uh, as we are, are kind of coming back up. You, you're also starting to put in a potential for a breakdown here with those lower highs. So keep an eye on that for a potential breakdown. The euro was our trade of the week last week with a very nice breakdown um, off of this area up here. So we had a really nice euro breakdown off of this area right here. Uh, and now if you were able to take that one and you rode that through, you were well, well rewarded for the week. Uh, and, and now we're looking at kind of the next level in the next area. Uh, I've got a couple of different areas, but I highlighted this one up here is probably the best. Now, on a daily chart, bigger picture, we're coming into an area of demand down here on the daily chart. So let's see if we get a little bit of bounce back up to one of these supply levels. Canadian dollar, we'd had a breakout identified in the Canadian dollar, and our talk track yesterday was uh, we had a little bit of a pop down through there on the over the over the holiday weekend uh, but I was willing to take it again if price came back in and gave me a little bit of basing in front which we did got a little pivot uh, and now we've gotten a nice little bit of a move down so if you took this breakdown in the overnight sessions now take your stop move it to break even uh, and hopefully that uh, that basically uh, you know that 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 little bit of a move can really get your week started off the right way so nice little move on uh, on the Canadian dollar. Uh, to kind of kick off your week. Great British Pound and Japanese Yen. The Great British Pound's continuing to trade lower um, as I look at, uh, at an area for a chance to get back in on the pound. Uh, I'm, I might want to consider this area up in here. Not a great time of the day. Um, you know, actually, terrible time of the day. Let me remove that. Uh, rethink that thought and then let's let's look at this one a little bit better time of day not still not phenomenal um, but it could give you a chance to get uh, to get back in on this movement Japanese yen was looking at a potential little reversal here uh, unfortunately price just popped right through that level we got we actually got a little bit of a move away from it right in here if you go to a smaller time frame you can see it a little bit more cleanly um, where we touched into the level and then got a bit of a move away. Uh, but it was unable to hold, and then price broke right through, hitting the stop on that on that one. So that one, unfortunately, did not hold true. Um, but all in all, uh, decent setups for the evening. The key here is is that you got to remain patient for price to give you a good setup before forcing a trade. You know, it, it's it's tempting on days like this to go down to five minute charts and look for ways to get in. Patience is important, and having the patience to wait for a good price setup. Uh, and I primarily stick to 15 minute and one hour charts. Uh, that's going to be the hard thing to do when you've got price between some some major areas and some major levels. But I think that that's probably the right thing to do is to maintain patience, wait for price to come into your zone, and then take the trade when it gets there. If you have any questions, please shoot us an email: support at tradersarmy.com. Uh, if you are in the Washington, D.C. area, we are doing a traders meetup, so I'd love to have you join us. Uh, if you are interested, we will put the link down at the bottom in the comment section below to register. But until next time, everybody, hope you have a great day. Bye.